What's up, everybody? What's going on? Happy July 23rd. Do you know what that means, Marone? July 23rd? What does July 23rd mean? I mean, I know it's Thursday, but help me. Do tell. The Xbox Games Showcase. And I have been tripping up over this because it's the Xbox Games Showcase, but the Xbox Game Pass, just one game, and Summer Game Fest, just one game. But today was the Xbox Games Up, plural, Showcase. That's uh, Yeah, it's awesome. I've seen some of the, the news come out about it. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is great. This is great. This is great. And it's just been like I want I've wanted to save some of my viewings for some of those videos for, for this right. hour. <laughs> um, so should we get right into it? Let's let's dive right in. All right, so the first topic we have is Control Developer Remedy explores military shooters with Crossfire X on Xbox One. Yeah, so around five years ago, Remedy Entertainment, the Finnish developer best known for supernatural thrillers like Alan Wake and Control, if you haven't played those games, try them out, uh, decided it wanted to become the kind of studio that worked on multiple projects at once. Meanwhile, many on the team were interested in expanding into first-person shooters and finding a way to tell Remedy-style shooters in the pervasive genre. So when Smilegate, the Korean developer behind the massively popular FPS Crossfire, reached out, it made a lot of sense. Um, Remedy executive producer Tuka Tai Palvesi, very Finnish name, you definitely know they're from Remedy, says, quote, they were looking for a studio to help them on the narrative side on the Crossfire franchise. So there are the two, uh, the, the two that we've just mentioned are now collaborating on Crossfire X, which is a console version of the military shooter coming to the Xbox One this year. Microsoft says that the game will be optimized for the Series X, but there are a few details uh, on that right now. Uh, Smilegate is handling the multiplayer portion while Remedy is building a single-player campaign. This is a first for the franchise. And if you have never heard of Crossfire, just know that it's extremely popular with an estimated 1 billion lifetime players, and that's primarily in China and Korea. When it comes to a blind spot in gaming for me, I feel like it's definitely games that are more popular in the East because I don't know anything about Crossfire, but Crossfire is huge. Um, I think it's cool that Remedy is going to be working on the single player campaign because Control, which was, you know, uh, created by or worked on by Remedy, um, it seems very different from just having an FPS. And Remedy was saying that it's, it's also very different from a developer's perspective to build a world for first person versus in third person that that's kind of a whole challenge on its own. Yeah, I was going to say their game, Alan Wake and the game Control, are third person experiences that for me, it's kind of like, well, how are you going to do in the first person uh, storytelling? So them, you know, addressing that right away is 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 strong. And I think it's 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 not going to be too big of a hurdle for them, but I am really curious with the way they tell they told stories in third person, mm-hmm. how some of that will translate over in the first person, you know, narrative. Right. And I wonder if I'm going to like this game to make it all about me because um, I still have yet to play Alan Wake, but I've heard great things about it, but I actually great. didn't like control. And I feel like I'm yeah. one of the few people that didn't because for some reason I couldn't really relate to the characters or, or, or the lead girl. Mm-hmm. I think they tried to be really mysterious about like, who is she? What is she doing? But in doing yeah. that, I was kind of like, okay, well, I don't really care about her if I don't know anything about her. But right. I think that's just my own thing. So I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what their next venture would be. And thank you so much, Kane, for gifting us up to Waffle. Hey, thank you so much, Kane. Thank you for doing that. I, I was going to say is, I think the one thing that I, I resonate with on the beginning of that game, as you were saying, is it, it was a little, you know, rough early on, like what's happening, what I don't really understand. I think it was the whole point. They set out to be very mysterious. Mm -hmm. Later on in the game, the action kicks up and the story starts to unfold. You learn more. And there's a lot of like actual like side missions that you needed to play in order to understand the fullness of the story. I remember completing the main storyline and realizing there was a lot in control I didn't get. Oh. <laughs> and when I went back and played the side missions, I was like, mm. oh, mm. oh, wow. They should have pushed these as main story, but they didn't. They allowed you to kind of like make that decision. Interesting. I am yeah. a big fan of side missions, but I do think that if yeah. it's, you know, st- something that's integral to the main story or that you should know, you shouldn't have to kind of, you know, maybe, maybe not discover that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. It, it it makes me think of, and as we've you know we talk about it often, it makes me think a little bit of you know cyberpunk, as they're saying you'll be able to get the entire story and never have to play you know the main quest. Uh, Black Phillip says Marone is repping my boy with a Peter Parker shirt. Oh yeah, it's my uh, Peter it. Tingle. I love it's the, it. It's the Peter Tingle shirt. <laughs> I'm wearing hidden Easter egg. I'm wearing my Recon Havoc jacket, which is my old nice. username. And yeah, I that's my right. Twitch affiliate badge, but now I'm not a Twitch affiliate anymore. Hopefully yeah, this upgraded. channel, hopefully this channel gets to upgrade soon as well. Looking yes. for that partner check. But I'm more excited to get into this next story, actually, which I should have put up at the top. But, you know, we got to ease into it. We do. We do. Because this was something we were like, OK, there's information surrounding this name. There's the Twitter account. There's all these rumors going on. And I'm so glad. We've been so spot on with these speculations. We have. As it is official, Fable Reboot is coming and it's headed to the Xbox Series X and PC. A new Fable game is heading to the Xbox Series X and Windows 10. Playground Games is developing the upcoming title, which will be a new beginning for the longtime franchise. And that Microsoft announced the game today as a part of its July showcase. We got to remember that Fable was originally released back in 2004 for the Xbox. And the last game in the main series was Fable 3, which had launched back in 2010. And this series is a choice-driven role-playing game in which the player's actions will impact their reputation and role in the world. Mediatonic also released Fable Fortune, which was a free-to-play collectible card game in 2018. And Fable will also be available on the Xbox Games Pass. So let's take a look at the trailer. Rixi says, will they make Fable good again? I took a little sneak peek, and this trailer <laughs> is very, very different from OG Fable, at least just on first look. <laughs> so let's take a look and react. Let's check it out. I'm so excited to see this. The world is filled with stories of legendary heroes and treacherous villains, of fantastical creatures and wondrous places where nature and magic live in perfect harmony. Not all stories have <laughs> But yours has yet to be written. Fable! It's here. Oh my God, it's I'm here. so excited. I was like, the graphic upgrade from the original Fable, which I recently restarted playing, is just... So it's just so different. And I'm like, who is that fairy? Is that fairy going to be important in this new Fable? Yeah. Or is that just kind of a thing that they threw in for the trailer? That's a that's a good question. Because I'm 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 kind of sitting there going like, is this going to be like a Peter Pan type situation? Is, uh, you, you know, mm -hmm. your, your fairy going to follow you around everywhere you go? Are they going to kind of be like, uh, maybe like some voice of reason in your path? That you, maybe. That you I thought it was re the really interesting touch of the frog. Yes. eating the fairy as it flew by and i knew it was there they have a very tongue-in-cheek way of doing a lot of their stories mm -hmm. um but i am curious what aspect of this teaser is alluding to the actual story itself right i um what's what's a buckle um i was wondering that as well and i was hoping that they would actually show more in the trailer, but at the same time, I'd rather the developers just work on the game versus, you know, work on creating, you know, a, a big trailer because I know that, like, for demos, it takes a lot of resources when developers could just be working on the game. But as Reese says, your health is low. Do you have any potions or food? I have the first hour of Halo, oh, not Halo, of Fable, like, seared into my mind, right. like, seared into my memory. The first time I played it um, was, you know, who knows how long ago, and yet I pretty much knew, like, all of the voice lines from that first yeah. hour i wonder if there's gonna be you know that level of iconic storytelling and iconic voice lines um that will make you know the new iteration of fable also be that profound as ray says yeah. chicken chaser like those lines are just you know so well known they really are i'm also curious are they gonna touch in with 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 kind of like what we see with cyberpunk and other games that do the uh, the butterfly butterfly effect 
where I, if you remember the other games, you could play evil and you could play good, but mm-hmm. most of what you got was like a, a predetermined outcome just based on which choice that you went. Mm-hmm. Will it be a world that fully opens up based on the, the moral choices that you make so that it has this high replayability factor that isn't, oh, I played the good role, oh, I played the bad role, and I'm done. But now it's actually going to be more uh, uh, rooted in this. Uh, every decision you make has some sort of outcome. Exactly. Will they make it, you know, as as legendary as, as the OG one? Are they going to make it a lot different? Are they going to yeah. actually use next gen technology, you know, to allow you to have more choices um, in it as well? Um, I'm really wondering how it's going to turn out, especially since it's a different studio from the first game, which I think was Lionhead yeah. Studios. Lionhead Studios. Lionhead yeah. Studios. Um, and Peter I, Molyneux was the, the creator, yeah. And I haven't played um, Fable 2 or 3, but I've also heard that I shouldn't. Or I, I've heard mixed opinions. Some people said they're good. Some people said they're not, you know, as exciting. Um, so I wonder if this one mm. is going to, you know, really live up to at least the first one. Fable 3 is uh, a really fun one. Fable 3 is the one, uh, I believe, when you're playing the king or you end up as, mm-hmm. as the king or queen. Um so I would say there, I think the one thing that Fable really did that I, I've always appreciated when I think about it was the um, uh, kind of like how you sit with the choices that you make. Mm-hmm. So you make a decision and you walk away from it. And yeah, I side with everyone. I think the first one just did so well uh, that, you know, two and three could never live up to it. Mm-hmm. So I just always enjoyed how they let the morality of the decisions you make uh, get carried out for you to just like fully, you know, digest them. So I just, as long as they stick to that way of storytelling, like Peter Molyneux set out to do with the original series, mm-hmm. I'm I'm more than happy to see what they do with this Fable reboot. So we'll see what more news we'll get from Fable. We have been following the kind of teasers, the new Twitter account yeah. they made um, along the way. So cool to see that we do have a confirmed new Fable coming yes. out. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Excited about it. And, you know, the fact that it's going to be available on PC is really strong, too. For those who don't have an Xbox One, you can also get the Xbox Games Pass Mm -hmm. uh, on your PC and play the games that they released there. So you can hop into Fable when it drops and just keep it on your gaming PC. It's good stuff. So more news that we have is about upgrades that are coming to existing games um, to make them play even better on the Xbox Series X. And that is, you know, not just new games for this Xbox Series uh, uh, game showcase. The company also announced that several recent Xbox One games will be getting upgraded for the first, for the first time, will be getting upgraded for the next gen console with new features and better graphics. For Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Sea of Thieves, and Gears Tactics are the five games that Microsoft has announced will be getting the optimized for Xbox Series X badge this holiday season. With a variety of upgrades coming to each of those games, players who already own a copy of any of these titles on Xbox One will get the optimized Xbox Series X for free whenever they do launch, thanks to Microsoft's smart delivery program, which is just a fancy way that means you'll be able to play them on Xbox Series X. And this is how everything breaks down. So Forza Horizon 4 is getting higher fidelity graphics, which let's just be honest. Forza is one of the most beautiful games that you can see on a current gen system. So getting higher fidelity graphics, a 4K 60 frames per second gameplay, a quick resume, and faster load times. Gears 5 will also see faster load times, quick resume, and ultra setting 4K HDR graphics for both campaign and multiplayer modes. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is getting higher fidelity graphics and faster performance at 120 frames per second, 4K HDR, and 120 hertz. Wow, and Sea of Thieves will take advantage of the advanced hardware on the Xbox Series X. Although Microsoft didn't give specific details, It is the only one in the group to have more of a specific release date, though. The optimized upgrade will be available on launch alongside the Series X. Gears Tactics will offer 4K and 60 FPS gameplay. Notably absent from this whole list, however, is Minecraft, which Microsoft has previously shown with even more substantial Xbox Series X enhancements than the aforementioned games, including far more realistic ray trace lighting, although it's possible that overhaul is simply coming later on due to the increased complexity. But I I agree, you know, as 
Um, as our research, research points out, it's kind of strange that they haven't really brought Minecraft into this whole mix when they have been teasing um, ray tracing in Minecraft for months. Yeah, and to add that uh, an important note to take away from these five titles, they're just the first ones that Microsoft is specifically optimizing for the Xbox Series X with these new improvements. And the Xbox Series X will be able to play nearly any Xbox One game outside of those built for Kinect, thanks to its pa backwards compatibility, though they may not have the same level of improvement as these specifically optimized titles. These are all great titles. I'm glad they're, you know, they picked these ones specifically to optimize. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, you know, is, you know, super renowned for how beautiful the game looks. And, you know, I'm glad they upgraded that to, to still look even better on the Xbox Series X, along with Forza Horizon 4 has been known for its graphics as well. I'm um, cool to see Gears 5, Sea of Thieves, and Gears Tactics in this. This is a nice lineup, I think, for their smart delivery program um, to yeah. be able to play the games you know and love on the next console. That's so true. I, I I felt when I was seeing this list that if you notice, it's a it's a a very specific list of titles that have been consistently successful mm -hmm. on the Xbox console from the 360 to the one to now what we see with the Series X. So these communities are some of the larger, more active communities on this console. So getting this specific upgrade, I think, is one of those ends with their community to make sure they feel um, they're getting that treatment. But there are also going to be those groups that I think will be vocal about the next gen console and the transition to the Xbox Series X uh, with what they feel are, you know, if they do feel they are good improvements. That's true. I wonder which games will also, you know, get this treatment. And I wonder how much players will really notice of like, oh, wow, this is a huge difference, you know, playing the same game on the next gen console, or if it'll just be kind of making it look seamless or at least not, you know, not like it's being clunky uh, yeah. on the next gen. Um, I, I hope that, you know, this is well received. I, f I feel like, as you said, a lot of the, you know, players of these games are, you know, very vocal and, you know, we're going to find out very quickly, um, you know, the second that a lot of these gamers can play on the yeah. next gen consoles, you know, if they really approve of these changes or not. That's true, too, because this is uh, this is still that area where Microsoft is needing to prove themselves as to why they're they're worth jumping to the next gen hardware as much as they, you know, say that their technology is going to benefit. I think there's a there's a question amongst consumers of, well, you know, if the PlayStation 5 is going to be as strong as it is appearing to be, mm -hmm. I'll just make my investment over there. However, I think they're doing a, a very strong um, marketing push with the Xbox Games Pass and making that to be a focus, as we know that they're possibly going to make that a part of just a free feature with the Xbox Series X. I think so too. They really have to fight to, you know, show that they are on par with or better than Sony. Um, Sony has been coming out with great announcements about the PS5. Um, I believe Rod um, Slasher Breslow tweeted like, yeah. oh, Sony wins or something like <laughs> that saw, today. I saw that. You like, saw that too? Sony owned Microsoft or something like that, yeah. And I feel like Sony came out with all these new game trailers, but Xbox and Microsoft are also just saying are also, you know, really harkening back to their old tried and true games to show that, you know, those are also going to be as spectacular and fun on the next gen. So it's just more of a different approach, I would say. I don't think there's necessarily one, you know, that's better than the other. Yeah, yeah, and and that is true. The 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 push to have more exclusives, you know, games are what sells hardware. I think that's one thing that Phil Spencer had touched on. I know that's one thing we've we've heard from uh, Sony with their um, their event last month was mm -hmm. that or earlier this month was that the software, the games are what really brings people in. And when you look at it on paper, I think there are more exclusives with uh, the PlayStation 5 that draw more people in. However, we are seeing things like with Obsidian that we will be talking about later on, that they have these deals with Microsoft now. So some of these storytellers that we know and love might specifically only be found with an Xbox Series X. That That is true. I wonder how much more, you know, Microsoft is going to expand their portfolio. Um, but one way that it is doing it is with Tetris, as Tetris Effect Connected is an Xbox exclusive multiplayer expansion. So the excellent Tetris Effect, which is a mesmerizing audiovisual spin on the classic puzzle game, it's getting a full multiplayer expansion this fall called Tetris Effect Connected which is releasing as a timed exclusive on PC, which is on the Microsoft Store and on Xbox platforms. 
The original game was a PlayStation 4 exclusive released in the fall of 2018 before it became uh, before it came to PC the following year via the Epic Game Store and Oculus VR platform back in May. The expansion developed by the same Japanese development duo of Monstars and Resonair, with additional help from Stage Games, was announced today as part of Microsoft's Xbox Series X next-gen games showcase. Publisher Enhance says to think of it as the 2.0 version of Tetris Effect. It will be made available as part of the Xbox Game Pass subscription service and as a standalone purchase, and it will support smart delivery for a free upgrade to the Xbox Series X version. The game is launching sometime this holiday season to coincide with the next-gen console's release. And the biggest new features include co-op and competitive multiplayer. So up to three players can play together locally or over the internet, and you can be joined by one or two computer-controlled players. For competitive play, two players can face off in both local and online ranked and unranked play. Enhance says that the game will be fully cross-platform between PC and Xbox, and the full version of Tetris Effect's Journey and Standard Puzzle modes will be part of that package. In summer 2021, Enhance says Tetris Effect Connected will arrive as a free update to the existing PS4, Epic Game Store, and Oculus Quest versions. This is some big news for Tetris in the past couple of weeks. You got that show that's coming out, and now they're saying like, hey, we're going to connect you guys to some Tetris Effect and make it a multiplayer co-op experience now. Right, I love how much Tetris news has been coming out. All of these hot Tetris drops for all of you Tetris heads <laughs> in the chat. Um, I think I always underestimate Tetris because I just don't really play yeah. Tetris, but I know that it's huge. It's a huge phenomenon. I wonder, thank you so much, Guy, for the support. Um, I thank wonder you, Guy. with Tetris Effect Connected coming to Xbox only, I'm I'm just like wondering what kind of a move that is because Tetris yeah. connected on being exclusive to Xbox isn't going to make me specifically buy an Xbox or maybe even buy the game no. pass. Yeah, I agree. That's a it's a weird it's a weird one to to examine because you're like, are people gonna be like, I'm an Xbox bad boy now because they got Tetris, you know? It's it's odd, but I also get its strength and kind mm. of like bolstering, hey. We're home to places like Halo and Gears of War and now mm -hmm. Tetris. You know, it could add that layer of, I don't know, respect from, you know, the previous generations who grew up with Tetris. That's true. Who may now, due to COVID, go, hey, I do want to jump into video games. Wait, this place has Tetris. I'll go and play it. I, I don't really know if that dialogue does exist, but it could exist that's true. I think that it's more of a strong point for the Game Pass specifically versus, you know, maybe the Xbox Series X. Um, this is an interesting move because Tetris Effect is, I, I mentioned it before, is, you know, really cool. The reviews on Oculus Quest are, are wild about this Tetris in VR. I didn't think that Tetris could get even more and more hype, but there is that Tetris game show coming out, which I think if you're like the last player um, yep. in the world playing Tetris at this certain time, you get prize money. There's competitive yep. Tetris. Um, there's, with Tetris Effect connected, they're talking about ranked and unranked play. Yeah. So I could, I feel like I haven't really heard heard much about pro Tetris players. I feel like in the past, when there were Tetris competitions, it was still seen as more niche versus yeah. being a part of really esports and the esports ecosystem and the esports world. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe with Tetris Effect Connected, we're going to see more of that and we're going to see Tetris players in their like cool jerseys, you know, signed, signed with like Team Liquid or these big orgs because, you know, it's really prominent in the gaming space. You know, that's a, that's a really interesting observation is like, what is ranked Tetris play going to feel like? What's it going to look like? What's the pressure like of playing Tetris next to something? Like you oh, see gosh. them playing as well. I mean, that's, right. you know, that's the, that's an added pressure that you already get when playing. But if you see somebody that they're playing better than you or you see their points are ahead of you, what does it add to the, the, the whole way the game is, is plays out? Does the stress get to you? Is that added layer of competition, uh, you know, make it more fun to watch? What mm -hmm. does somebody do? What are the risks that may, they may take with the blocks? Things like that that you might not be thinking of now, uh, but you start to see them play out as you see these, like, high-ranked players on, on Tetris Effect playing each other.
As Waffle says, dude, Tetris comps used to be the only esports though. Exactly, which is why I'm pointing out that it's so strange that it's not, there's no Twitch rivals for Tetris, at least that I've heard of. Like, I don't see any pro Tetris players, you know, active on, on Twitter or anything. I don't know if maybe they're just older or <laughs> because competitive Tetris is, is, you know, so much older than the rest of esports. It's still kind of its own thing, but I'm looking for a Tetris to be embraced and, you know, coming up on my Twitter feed, being with these orgs, you know, being, you know, in, in the, in the know of esports that's so true and it's just it's crazy to me but also just kind of one of those moments as like appreciation of being within the gaming uh community and, and being a part of it for as long as i have is i remember og game boy tetris and mm -hmm. you know to know that experience to see where it's at now and how it stayed and people still love it and they still see a reason to to develop on it and create it and add layers to it that might not have been there before. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a really cool moment to kind of still see like even with next gen we're still talking about a previous gen title so previous ago like I was 5 when I first played it or 4 or 5 like with a Game Boy. Not really understanding what was going on, but just knowing like man this thing's been around for a long time. Right, a long time, but something new that we actually have to show you is um, the creators of Sonic are making a theatrical action game for the Xbox Series X, and this actually comes out of Balan Company, which was Square Enix's you know new venture that we briefly talked about, and we were wondering what kind of action games is Balan Company going to make, and now we have an answer. Yeah, so this is again one of just a, one of those moments being like i didn't see this coming but you know what wow this does make sense so the two original creators of sonic the hedgehog lead programmers yuji naka and character designer naoto oshima are reuniting to create a new theatrical action platformer called balan wonder world which is set to release on the xbox series x and xbox one in spring of 2021 Balan Wonderworld marks the first time that the duo has worked together on a project since they created Sonic over two years ago. Yuji Naka will be directing the upcoming title, while Naoto Oshima, who originally designed characters like Sonic and Dr. Eggman, will be working on the title too. So the game is set in the quote-unquote Wonderworld and inspired by the theater, with protagonists Leo and Emma playing through 12 different tales, and it's led by the mysterious clown Balan. Players will be able to collect over 80 different costumes to unlock new abilities as they journey through the colorful, almost Mario-esque worlds along the way. Balan Wonderworld is the first game from Balan Company, and it will be published by Square Enix in spring 2021. Going to check out the preview? Yeah, let's look at that trailer. The Balan Wonderworld. Balan Wonderworld. A strange and mysterious land that you visit when you come to a turning point in life. This feels very a hat in time to me. Yeah. Super wholesome already. Yeah, so pure. Yeah. Very colorful. Over Whirling eight wolf. different costumes, unlocking unique Super streamer. and abilities. The action is here. Wedding comes, this game is like the epitome of eye bleach. It's just so pure. You. <laughs> right? Oh my god. Wow, that song kind of slaps. Look into your hearts to discover what's most precious. Look into your heart. The 
a wink. Alan Wonderworld. Every I'm, moment is an adventure. I've got to say, uh, this is so different from what we were guessing. We were like, oh, an action game from Square Enix? Is it going to be like a shooter? Is it going to be right? like dark because it's Square Enix? And this is yeah. not it. No, nope. it's exactly <laughs> what you would expect from an action Square Enix branch. I mean, this is, I loved the little features of like, you get to wear these different costumes. Mm -hmm. That's so similar to, you know, a lot of the, the, the other games that have been developed in the past where like, you can get different power-ups and abilities and the costumes. That replayability factor is there. You're talking 80, yes. what was it, like 80 costumes? Yeah, something so like that. each level you can go through or each tale you can go through and play with these different costumes to see the outcomes, how to handle those puzzles and platformers and, and, and the action sequences. It's, it's very, cool. Uh, it seems cool. It's, it seems very My Time in Porsche, I believe it's called, or Hat in Time, or just like, you yes. know, pure, fun platformer. It definitely also has that kind of like Nintendo, Mario, uh, Super Mario Odyssey kind of feel. It's cool. I, I feel like I'd want to play that game after I've had a hard day. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to play a fun platformer. Yeah, it, it, it definitely seems like one of those titles where you just kind of like sit back and uh, escape you know, uh, when I played Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts mm -hmm. had that effect on me. Right. Uh, not surprising. And <laughs> um, this is another one of those games that I think it's just like, like you said, it's just sit down, decompress, enjoy some wholesome, find it within your heart, within. play some Balan, <laughs> Balan Wonderland. I hope the dance numbers are maybe like a little oh bit God. like you got to hit the buttons yes, and time it up. Yes, that'd be in fun. There. Yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool. Rough Night of League, play, play Ballad Wonderworld. So we have another game that is maybe a little darker um, because Life is Strange developers have a new game called Tell Me Why, and it will launch on August 27th, coming up real soon. It's pretty soon as Don't Nod's latest narrative-driven game, Tell Me Why, launches on the 27th, and Microsoft announced the news during today's July showcase alongside several game premieres and updates. Don't Nod announced Tell Me Why last November for the Xbox One and PC. The game set in Alaska follows a set of twins working through memories of their childhood. The two share a supernatural bond that grants them the power to interact with their past memories. As with Life is Strange, a player's choices will affect the outcome of the story. Along with the release date, Don't Nod also dropped a new trailer offering to look at the game's story. And the developer has previously said it will release all three episodes at once rather than spacing them out as with games like Life is Strange. And Don't Nod is also currently working on a psychological thriller, Twin Mirror, which is expected to launch later this year. Let's take a look at the trailer. It's a trailer day today. Yeah, trailer day! Whoa, I just got hit with a flood of memories. Love you, Mom. You seeing what I'm seeing? Mom? Allison? Yeah. It doesn't matter that they don't believe us. We all believed that what happened that night was self-defense. But we couldn't Thanks, be sure. Thanks, Ray. It doesn't matter that they kept us apart. Brother, sister, we look out for each other. It doesn't matter that finding the truth feels impossible. We're all done with fairy tales. The only thing that matters is you're my brother. And the only way to move forward Mom. I like your is sweater. to keep looking back. Mom. We've been getting these visions whenever we see or hear something really emotional. Everything we thought we knew about Marianne just got thrown out the window. She loved you. She attacked you. We both saw it. I thought coming here would be closing a chapter of our lives. Nothing good comes from stirring up old memories. We don't really have a choice about that. There's always a choice, son. I can't do this. Stop! 
I like that cover. Yeah, same. Very Life is Strange. This is Completely. so like, so Life is Strange down to the art style. Someone says it looks too cartoony to, cartoony to be real, realistic, but that's just how Life is Strange kind of looked yeah. like too. Um, deep, emotional, looking back in the yeah. past, like family ties. Yeah, the the line of like, uh, nothing good ever comes from looking into the past. You know, yeah. that kind of, you're like, oh wow, what am I going to learn here? I, I noticed too some of those moments of like, these are areas where you go and maybe like a vision pops up. There were like glowing little areas around. Mm -hmm. So that's going to feel very Life is strange S where you go to a certain location to see what's going on, to be reminded of it. It's going to hit you in the feels for sure. I'm it seeing is. that in the chat. Yeah, it's definitely going to hit you in, in the feels there. I love Kane's comment. Did that cop sound like Obama? <laughs> I think I'm, I miss that. I gotta go back. Listen to that. Obama started his voice acting career along with Meghan Markle. <laughs> I think too the uh, the the hopefully you get to play the game as either the sister or the brother. That would be so cool. Maybe you can go back through play again and get a different experience. Maybe there'll be moments where they separate and they go do their own thing, and you do a playthrough as the other to see what they went and experienced as well. Seems like it's touching on trauma uh, a little bit, mm -hmm. and, you know, evaluating the past memories to unlock what actually took place or happened and occurred. Yeah. Algebraic asks, is this going to be like the butterfly effect game? I don't think so. I think the first Life is Strange was the only one that actually used the butterfly effect superpowers yeah. and all the other games that kind of branch off from that had some supernatural element, but they didn't have the, the whole butterfly effect kind of thing going for them. The one thing it will have is what you do know of from these developers, which is that every decision you make will have an effect on the outcome and the ending that you get. So... Mm -hmm no reversing time type situation but yes your decisions will carry on with you the, whole, the entire playthrough and we've got another trailer too also with a with the xbox games showcase if you watch the whole thing it's about an hour long and we just kind of wanted to pick some some highlights some cool games um show you just the trailers um if if you haven't gotten a chance to check them out yet yeah this is one that i'm very excited about because i just i love this studio i think anyone who's aware of obsidian and knows what they did for uh uh for bethesda with with fallout and what they did with the outer world which is just essentially a fallout in space game as there is a new fantasy rpg from obsidian coming out Fallout New Vegas and the Outer World studio Obsidian Entertainment has announced a new fantasy role-playing game called Avowed for Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and PC. Avowed takes place in Eora, the setting of Obsidian's 2015 game Pillars of Eternity and its 2018 sequel. But it's swapping Pillars of Eternity's old-school isometric perspective for first-person gameplay, apparently including sword play and spell casting. The trailer that we're going to watch doesn't give away much detail, but it does offer a sense of the game's aesthetic and tone. I'm there with EG. I know what you did, Bethesda. Uh, <laughs> Avowed is Obsidian's third game since its acquisition by Microsoft. Following Outer Worlds and Grounded, which is a cooperative survival game where shrunken players navigate the dangers of a backyard. Grounded is set to be released through Steam Early Access and Xbox One and an Xbox game preview on July 28th, right around the corner. And today, Obsidian also announced a noir-influenced expansion to the Outer Worlds called Peril at Gorgon, and that is going to be released on September 9th. However, there has not been a release date set for Avow. So even though there's no release date, let's look at the trailer and see how hyped we are going to be for this game. We have always known war. It forged our empire. Turned heroes Man, those are some strong archers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and decimated our foes. Now our oaths are lost, forsaken. And you must face the monsters. Wow. Our sins have borne. Okay. Is 
is an oath worth the weight of a crown. To me, okay. this kind of feels very Sky. Well, how I played Skyrim of like sword in one hand, like spells in the other. Doesn't kind of it vibe. feel a little bit like Obsidian is like, hey, Bethesda, yeah. we're going to do what you do, but better. Do you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. It does. It really does feel like that. I mean, I'm, I'm just sitting here feeling like Obsidian seems a little bit still kind of upset with what took place with their relationship at Bethesda. I, I'm. I'm genuinely curious, and this is just kind of like a speculation. After seeing the Outer Worlds and seeing that it is pretty much Fallout in space, I wonder if maybe there was a conversation at some point, like they might do something with Skyrim. They might get their own expansion with Skyrim. And then whatever took place, whatever reason that they're not around anymore, they're like, fine, we're going to do our own thing. And look, <laughs> that trailer was awesome. I was just like, it was so good. I'm all for it. After what you guys did with, with Outer Worlds, I'm all for it. Right, the Outer Worlds was great. It won so many awards. You know, it was it was super cool. There are so many great reviews. I've only heard great things about the Outer Worlds. And you're right. Now this game looks like a very you know Skyrimy <laughs> version, but way better. It does. And I'm also I'm hoping they have things in there that are nods to Skyrim, like yes. uh, the the slowdown of time in in Outer Worlds, which is skipping me. It had it has a name that's just basically what the VAT system is really? from uh, from, from from Fallout, Fallout. and it was just really funny. So I'm wondering if there's going to be some like you know a giant shout or something like that that's very s similar to like the Fusro Da that you yes. get out of Skyrim. I hope so. I hope so. I I think it's um it, it's hilarious. It looks really cool. Um the the graphics look really great. Yeah. If that's a hint of you know what gameplay is going to be looking like on next gen, you know I'm I'm getting hyped just for next gen itself. You know. Yeah. Same. And I do. It did look more serious. You know, with the outer worlds, there was it definitely did. that tongue and cheek aspect to the trailer and to the footage. Yeah. I do. I do. I want, I'm all for like new storytelling or whatever, but the one thing that I give Obsidian a lot of credit on is their ability to take a tongue in cheek approach to, to real topics mm -hmm. and to things that, you know, we all should be concerned about. And I hope they don't forego that with this game. I hope that's still a part of their storytelling. Me too. Um, so our next story is about Destiny 2, but we're not going to watch the whole reveal trailer. You can if you want to, because we haven't been super praising. We haven't been praising Destiny 2 a ton, but we're just going to touch on this news. Yeah, as someone who invested four years of their life into the Destiny 2 journey, uh, this is one to note as Destiny 2 is coming to the Xbox Games Pass in September, and that is actually going to include the Beyond Light DLC. Microsoft and Bungie are partnering to bring Destiny 2 to Xbox Game Pass. The original Halo developer will launch Destiny 2 at no additional cost to Xbox Game Pass subscribers in September, and it will, continue, and it will include access to previous expansions and the upcoming Destiny 2 Beyond Light DLC. The standard editions of Destiny 2 DLC will all be available with Destiny 2 Season Pass sold separately. Bungie recently delayed its Beyond Light expansion to no November 10th after it was originally scheduled to launch on September 22nd. Bungie cited difficulties of development during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Beyond Light will include a new element called Stasis for Destiny 2 players. And Stasis is based on manipulating time and the major expansion will be set on the icy moon of Jupiter Europa. Bungie also revealed a new trailer for Beyond Light today, demonstrating the stasis freeze effect. The new subclasses will even work in Destiny 2's player versus player environment, and their trailer shows a hunter building an icy wall and then freezing nearby enemies. Bungie is also optimizing Destiny 2 for the Xbox Series X with 4K resolution, supporting running at 60 frames per second, which is a big jump over the 30 frame version now running on the Xbox One and Xbox One. I love how Philip says, LMIO, tough crowd for Destiny. We're a tough crowd for Destiny, but I do think it's cool that it's coming to the Game Pass. I feel like the Xbox Game Pass is just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I think eventually it's going to be kind of the, the why don't I have the Game Pass when I have access to so many games, you know, with the subscription. Yeah, completely agreed. Um, and it is going to be that, that, that space where any title it looks like for the Xbox library of, of titles that they have will be at some point on that Games Pass. 
Our next topic is Dragon Quest XI is finally coming to Xbox One. Ever since it debuted in 2018, Dragon Quest XI has slowly been spreading to other platforms. It's playable on the PC, PS4, and Switch, and now it's finally coming to the Xbox One. During the Xbox Series X showcase today, Microsoft revealed that the definitive edition of the role-playing game is launching on, it, on its console on December 4th. It will be available through the Xbox Games Pass, and the definitive version will launch the same day on PS4 and Steam as well. Exactly, Game Pass is so worth at this point. So this news about Dragon Quest is particularly interesting because it marks the series debut on Xbox platforms. Despite being one of Japan's most popular franchises, Dragon Quest has generally struggled in the West. That coupled with the Xbox's small presence in Japan has made the two seem like an unlikely fit. Lately though, Japanese role-playing games have seen a surge on the Xbox One, thanks in large part to the Final Fantasy series joining the Xbox Game Pass. Let's check out that trailer. And to, to the Game Pass question, I think it's worth it. Just on the price and amount of games. You're the reincarnation of the Luminary. Know this. The Luminary is the root of all evil and will bring north but misery. I'm like, who's that girl in the green? The Big fan already. To take the sword in hand once more. Do you know much about Dragon Quest, Marone? I don't really know anything. It's been around for a while, though. It's been around for a long time, and apparently it's super popular in Japan, but for some reason it's never really tapped into the Western market. Uh, yeah, Maybe Final Fantasy took that? I do know that slime, though. That's the little blue guy looks very familiar. Yeah. I also just, I've always recognized it. I've always seen it, but I've never thought, oh, I gotta play it. Yes. Who is she? I wonder if the combat is a strong point of the game because it kind of looks like a Nintendo Switch game to me. It does, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping so too. And it also could just be their attempt at finally uh, tapping into the Xbox gamers who may know nothing about their series because they're like, oh, it's a free game, I'll try it out. We've right. seen that already with, with games on the Xbox Games Pass. People will play them if they're there. Oh, oh wow. mode. That's pretty cool. Can you switch in and out of that? That would be really interesting. Right? Maybe it's like how in um, Super Mario Odyssey there were some areas where you had to play in 2D mode, but it, they just like came in little bits and pieces. Cool. I think this is going to get a surge of players. I think so too. I think a lot of people are going to want to try this out, especially, you know, if it's going to be included with the Game Pass and probably go like, oh, this is really fun. You know, why haven't yeah. I played the other games? Yeah, exactly. Again, the Game's Pass, to, to the question there before, it, it just value alone and the library you get access to really does put it as like the Netflix of gaming right now. It does. It, it really does. Um, but I do want to get into our next topic before we run out of time, because I would say this, this is... is our last one? Uh, I would say our last one, and then we'll we'll jump into our On This Day in Gaming history. Yes, that is true. As we did save the best for last from the Xbox Series gameplay showcase, as Halo Infinite, an eight-minute gameplay trailer, was dropped today. Microsoft is finally giving us a better look at Halo Infinite today. After promising and teasing Halo Infinite gameplay for the past few weeks, the game certainly looks like an ambitious bet from 343 Industries. Halo Infinite is a spiritual reboot of Halo, designed so that players new to the franchise can jump into the story. And we got our first look at the Halo Infinite gameplay today, running at a locked 60 frames per second on the Xbox Series X. The open world environment looks a lot like the original Halo Combat Evolved, the eight-minute gameplay even includes Halo's Warthog vehicle and banished enemies, including Brutes. 
The gameplay, which starts several hours into the Halo Infinite campaign, also includes new mechanics like Master Chief's new grappling hook and a drop wall cover. There's also a mysterious new Halo ring that 343 Industries says is several times bigger than the last two Halo games combined. With Halo Infinite, we're now able to give players more freedom than ever before to explore a sprawling Halo ring, says 343. This demo shows off just a small section of the open and expansive world we've crafted to deliver an epic Master Chief experience. The scale of the environment accessible to players is several times larger than that of the last two Halo games combined, with opportunities to discover hidden rewards and assault banished fortifications in brand new ways. And it has taken five years for 343 Industries to make Halo Infinite. By the sounds of it, we won't be seeing a Halo Infinite 2 or Halo 7, or whatever we want to call it, in the years after its release in late 2020. That's because Halo Infinite studio head Chris Lee said in an interview with IGN, quote, we want Infinite to grow over time versus going to those numbered titles and having all that segmentation that we had before. It's really about creating Halo Infinite as the start of the next 10 years for Halo and then building that as we go with our fans and community. Lee went on to call Infinite a platform for the future, but it's unclear what that means. IGN claims Halo Infinite will not be a live service game, but the only way for Infinite to be realistically serving as a quote-unquote platform in place of numbered titles is for it to receive updates and expansions much like a live service game. The difference could perhaps be that those expansions delivering wholly separate campaigns rather than tying into one ongoing story. So let's take a look at this gameplay trailer that we have. It's eight minutes long. It's our first big look at what Halo Infinite will play like. I think it's interesting that they want Halo Infinite to be the new Halo, kind of like Fortnite or like Destiny 2, where, you know, they just keep updating. Yeah, agreed. And it does, when you give the name Infinite, you are saying, right. I'll be around for a while. I'm going to have to make an emergency landing. Hold on. Facial expressions are very, very, again, noticeable, but detailed. Mm -hmm. No, get no, you. I can't stand this. Who oh, you are? Breathe. No, you don't get to tell me what to do. You don't get to tell me anything. We're. I can see this guy getting memed already. I count three anti-aircraft yeah. cannons. Three what? You'll be safe here. Oh, I'll be safe. <laughs> safe? I haven't been safe since I found you. I found you, remember? You were out there on your own, and you'd still be out there if it wasn't for me. I thought I was going home. There won't be a home if we don't stop the banished. You keep saying that. We're outgunned, outnumbered. I know I Not planned, outmanned. Hamilton, you anyone? Dig through them and find <laughs> one with the working sleep space drive. And when you're done with this war, we we'll get away from here. This yes, is only, only on next Xbox. Gameplay trailer starts with cutscene. I was about to say that that um, sometimes Please. Xbox doesn't know what gameplay means. Me so they're still figuring that out. Cannons this does feel very OG that? Halo. With it does. The cinematic taking you right Together. into the gameplay like this. That's what struck me first thing was how similar the environment looks to, you know, the OG Halo. Yes. Is this on PC as well? I don't think so. I don't think we've really seen Halo on PC besides the Master Chief Collection and the games that yeah. are currently coming out. I think this is going to be an Xbox Series X exclusive. Is Halo 5 on PC for some reason? I think it is. I'm getting immediate combat evolved vibes. No, yeah, Halo's just on Xbox. Kane's like, well, now I gotta get the shiny trash bin. <laughs> This is what the old games still look like in my memory. Great update. This is new.
Are we going to say the maps are going to be like kind of like open world? You get to pick points of interest to go to? Maybe. Who's that voice? Coil, drop wall. It's like the bubble, but I was just about the wall. to say. Mm -hmm. Oh snap! Grappling hook. <laughs> Gotta have that music in there. nostalgic feels just wash over me as I hear it. Where's Cortana, says Ray? Stabbing you in the back. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's too busy betraying you. This is exactly what I want from a Halo game. This is all I want from a Halo game. Yeah. I'm excited about all the new weapons and stuff. I told someone about how there's eight minutes of gameplay out and they said, well, it's not Bungie. And I'm going, well, but have you seen it? Because it looks very similar, honestly. It really does. What is this? Oh my God, the grappling nice. hook. Where's the it was blood? like a hand shotgun. Oh, that was cool. Turret. These moments are always great in Halo. Just, just unload on everything. Alderbrake says you scared me for a minute. Halo Infinite is on Steam. Is it? Let's see. Halo Infinite video game. Platforms, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Microsoft Windows. You proved oh, us so, wrong. So yeah, it'll be available for the for PC as well. This is 43 minutes ago, Halo Infinite on Steam. Really? Nice. Pretty cool. Sea lost this war months ago. Your people are broken, scattered, hunted, defeated by me. I wish I could tell you it was difficult, but it wasn't. <laughs> we are one step ahead, always. Three. Is already under our control. Soon, the auditorium mm. as well. <sighs> the Harbinger and the Banished share the same goal. We fight together to honor the will of Atriarchs. There's a very Without Destiny you, 2 story happening right I'm now that I'm coming on. Weary. Lord. This would make a great cosplay. Oh, yeah. Our story will outlive us. 
could growl like that <laughs> so <laughs> there is a storyline in destiny 2 with a character named dominus gall mm -hmm. who those uh that that faction within destiny 2 is the brutes but transferred over into destiny 2 as their as their new name faction which is, is skipping me mm -hmm. the fallen uh um no i can't remember them all of a sudden but uh that character is almost Entirely reminiscent of Dominus Gaul and that same storyline where the leader or a, a person from this specific group rises up to take control of the light and to, uh, you know, exercise their power over the Guardian. So I was watching this and I was like, oh, wow, are they copying? Copying Bungie? <laughs> what, that, it just felt so reminiscent of that storyline. It, it did. I've already seen articles out about Halo Infinite that's like, it looks just like OG Halo for better or for worse. So we're going to see if they really do, you know, live up to, you know, the Halo name, if Halo Infinite is going to kick off the next 10 years of Halo with a bang. Um, as you said, are they recopying Bungie? And is that going to turn yeah. out well for them? Yeah, we'll have to see. But it did remind me of it. And if they do stick to the essence uh, and core of what Halo was, this could be a resurgence of Halo. And seeing it come out and be around for quite some time is something I'm all for, especially if that means we start talking about Halo more often again. Uh, me too. Um, but that does bring us right to the end of our news as a, a last thing we want to send you off with is on this day in gaming, Max Payne was released. As you know, on Thursday, we do a wonderful throwback because it is throwback Thursday as Max Payne was released, which is the neo-noir third-person shooter video game series developed by Remedy Entertainment and Rockstar Studios. The series is named after its protagonist, Max Payne, which is a who is a New York City police detective turned vigilante after, after his family had been murdered by some drug. And it was first released July 23rd today in 2001, um, 19 years ago. So happy birthday, happy 19th birthday to Max Payne. That's crazy. This was one of those games that I remember playing early on that had some actual like impact on me at some mm -hmm. of the storytelling that they did. And uh, this was also the first game, too, that I remember it had the slow motion shooting, which was just so much so fun. Cool. You just always wanted to do to the dive and slow mo shooting. I loved that feature. Great, great stuff. So happy birthday to Max Payne. We're looking forward to more Xbox news. And that does bring us to the end of our day today in gaming news. As the Xbox Series X game showcase really took up a lot of the time, we saw some amazing things, talked about the new Fable officially being confirmed, showed the Halo Infinite gameplay, and also checked out a few other ones knowing that Obsidian's working on a new title. Today was awesome for gamers, and thank you for tuning in to Daily Gaming News, all you DGN fam. Um, as a little teaser for tomorrow's news, we'll be talking more about the U.S. Army's retreat from Twitch, which there have been more updates on. They and got our memo. They, they, they got our memo. They've been listening. Um, and a developer that's making a new version of Jet Set Radio because Sega won't. That's exactly right. If you guys remember Jet Set Radio, it is coming, but it's coming from a new developer under a new title. And this is very, very reminiscent of the OG Jet Set Radio. Uh, but thank you so much for joining our live show. Our VODs will be posted on Twitch and also on our new YouTube channel. It is brand new. All new VODs will be over there. If you're watching a VOD, we are live from 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific every weekday. And thank you for tuning in, liking, subscribing, following, doing all of that on the social media to continue to help the DGN family grow. But for daily gaming news, it brings us uh, to a close today. I am Marone. I am Kaisa. Thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everybody. Have a great one.